Hello everyone, Nina Soden here to share my Friday reads with you. So I have my coffee and I have a good book and I am super excited to talk about it today. So today I am talking about Fade. It is the second book in Lisa Mac McMahon's Wake trilogy. So it starts with Wake, then Fade, and then Gone. So today I want to talk to you about Fade. We talked about Wake last week. All right, this is the sequel to Wake. So the back says, some nightmares never end. For Janie and Cable, real life is getting tougher than the dreams. They're just trying to carve out a little secret time together, but no such luck. Disturbing things are happening at Field Ridge High, yet nobody's talking. When Janie taps into a classmate's violent nightmares, the case finally breaks open. But nothing goes as planned, not even close. Janie is in way, at, way over her head, and Cable's shocking behavior has grave consequences for them both. Worse yet, Janie learns the truth about herself and her ability, and it's bleak. Seriously brutally bleak. Not only is her fate as a dream catcher sealed, but what's to come is a way darker than she's feared. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so in Wake, we discover that Janie is this dream catcher. Basically, she falls into other people's dreams and she can get trapped there. Um, kind of sucks if they're nightmares. And we discover that what she's supposed to be doing is maybe helping people in their dreams. She can help people to change things in their dreams, change the events of their dreams, fix things. But in this book, she now is going to help learn things from the dreams. We'll say that. Well, she's going to learn things. So in book one, we learned that Cable is a narc. He's working with the police to try to do a drug bust with the rich kids and their families up in the hills, um, trying to get them caught who's selling the drugs. Basically, he's after one girl's father. All right. But in this one, Jamie is now going to start working as a narc. Okay, there will be spoilers in this. So Stop the video right now if you don't like spoilers. Sorry, I just jumped right in there without giving a little warning. So in this book, Jamie is actually now working with the police officers as well, and she's helping Caleb, and they are on this uh, mission to find a sexual predator in the school. Apparently, there is word that there may be a sexual predator in the school. So she is jumping in and out of people's dreams to try to figure out who that might be. All right, so the writing in this one, just like Wake, it's a really quick read. Uh, I think I read it in like a day and a half, two days, whatever. I started it one day, I finished it the next day. The style is still broken down by date and time. It kind of feels like we're following along like a voyeur on the wall, watching her story, watching her life as it unfolds. Um, it starts about two weeks after the first book ends, so we don't feel like we've lost any time. There are jumps like that through throughout the book, so it feels like it goes right along. Now, I will say this. This book is listed as young adult. This book doesn't feel very young adult-ish. Now, it's not because of language. There's no real horrible language in this. But it's content, and maybe it's not even just the content, but it is also the um, level to which she describes the content. So the first book, a lot about drugs, a lot about underage drinking, not something I really want to encourage my children to do. So not really something I'd want them to read until they're older. This book has a lot to do, again, I said, they're trying to find a sexual predator. So there is that sexual connotation. There is, I'm going to say it, there's rape in this one. These are not topics that I feel young kids should read. They typically say young adult books are good for like early teens. And then it goes up because young adult readers, I'm 
I'm not an early team. I'm not a young team. <laughs> I'm an adult. Um, but the mass majority of readers for young adult novels is actually older. It's women in their 30s to 50s. That's perfect. That's great for this. Um, it is written in a very easy style. The reading level, yes, is probably younger and a teenager could read this and understand it and comprehend everything. I just don't know that I would want my daughter reading this book as a young teen. Older teen, sure. It is very good. I really enjoyed it. But the topics of drugs and partying and underage drinking and sexual predators and sexual assault, all of that is just a bit much. And it's all in this active high school. This is all high school. And I'm, I'm sure that there are high schools out there where kids are drinking, kids are doing drugs, kids are having sex. It's just not something I'd want to expose my kids to um, at an early age and get their minds going, but maybe their minds are already going. I, I don't know. Um, all right. So this is a great book. Not really what I would consider a young adult. I'd probably say new adult would be a better definition for this. So that 17, 18 and older range. All right. So very exciting. Loved it. Cannot wait to read Gone, which is book three. Oh, preview. All right. So the appearance of this one, I like the other style better. I have posted in my blog post the two covers for this book because all three of these books had two covers. Similar to this one, a black cover with a single image in the middle and a one word, you know, colored title. Very simple. I like this style. But I was not able to get that style for this book. I found the other two at a used bookstore. This one I had to order. So it's, you know, he doesn't look like the character of K Cable to me. At least not how I envisioned him in my head. Um, so that kind of distracted me. But it's a nice cover. It's nice enough. I probably wouldn't have picked it up on its own had I not already been reading the series. All right, so my favorite quote from this one is a response that Jamie gives to one of her teachers when he basically implies that because she comes from the wrong side of the tracks and is poor, she probably won't go to college. Or if she does, it'll be a community school. So Jamie says, well, she, and this is when he says, oh, are you going to the community college? She says, well, I would if and I didn't have Earl Jr. on the way. And, you know, Mama can't stay home alone in the trailer so good no more. I got to go find Earl Sr. so I can get me some money. Know what I mean? <laughs> so her sarcasm just comes out full force in this quote. Her inner strength and her sarcasm says this to a teacher. And I am not, I am not at all saying that children, kids, even young adults should talk back to their teachers. But if, if you are being blatantly, um, if somebody's being blatantly rude to you and just talking down to you, I do feel that you should stand up for yourself. And that is what she did in this quote. She talked back, which I don't approve, but she did stand up for herself. And I just loved the way that Lisa McMahon wrote this quote. Well, I would if and I didn't have Earl Jr. on the way. And <laughs> it's just, it's just perfect. So read this book, find that quote, and you will laugh as hard as I did. It was the perfect slap in the face for when he basically said, you're not good enough. And she said, watch me. All right, so that is Fade, the second book in Lisa McMahon's Wake Trilogy. Next week, I will be talking about Gone. And if you have not already checked out Wake and picked it up at your bookstore or ordered it online, do it. Grab all three of these books. They are phenomenal. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a great day and happy reading.